Hello friends, Tao here and welcome to another Legion pre-patch survival guide, this time looking at the Protection Warrior. Honestly, this is a class that I initially didn't really enjoy all that much, but after playing it a little bit, some of you guys might have saw me play the Xavius uh, raid encounter that I was testing out. This is a lot of fun, it's a really good class, and just take a moment to appreciate how fucking beautiful the class order hole is. Look at that. It's fantastic. Anyways, guys, the biggest things that have changed with the Protection Warrior is the removal of Shield Barrier and the addition of Ignore Pain. So what is Ignore Pain? It is Shield Barrier with a hole in it. That's basically the most easy way to explain it possible. Um, it can stack. It can become very, very powerful in the right talent setup in the right situations. And it's basically the big new thing about Warriors. And the other thing that I want to mention for Warriors is that their resource generation is a little bit wonky. You can have a lot of resources coming in when you're fighting more than one target or when you're getting you know, hit really, really hard. Or you can potentially be a little starved if it's in a single target scenario and if the single target isn't even hitting you all that hard. So keep that in mind. Beyond that, the basics of the warrior are still the same. You shield slam to get some rage. You devastate to uh, use as a filler and reset the cooldown on shield slam. Shield block is still there, blocking all attacks that hit you and ignore pain we already talked about it's your um, new absorb shield with a hole to allow you to still generate rage from damage taken revenge is still here but it works a little bit differently it's a cleave in front of you it's going to be generating rage and then thunderclap is still here to do a little bit of aoe damage that's the other big thing to point out rage from damage taken is back whether this is going to be a good or bad thing who the fuck knows um it's been improved a little bit since the last time that they tried this but it feels like every single time historically this comes back, they have issues with it and they have to remove it. Whether that will happen in the middle of this, this expansion, I have no idea. I hope not. I really hate when things like that happen and really mess up people's favorite class or the way that people have been playing the class for an expansion. But if it's bad, it needs to go. It needs to be viable to play. Uh, so basically, mechanics of class are the same. Shield Slam, Revenge, uh, you Devastate, all that kind of stuff. That's all still there. Revenge is just a cleave in front of you now. And it can be reset with dodges and parries, but only once up to every three seconds. So you're not going to be getting any revenge spams out of cra uh, out of nowhere. They're just you know going off. Um, but you still use shield block to block everything that's coming at you. It's only 10 rage. This is no longer a big big rage you know drain. But you do have ignore pain, which can take up to 20 to 60 pain, which is going to uh, rage. Sorry, I'm thinking about demon hunters. It's going to take up to 20 to 60 rage, and it's going to give you a bigger absorb shield according to how much damage you're taking, and it's going to ignore up to 90% of that, so you can still get some rage. Beyond that, everything else is still basically the same for warriors. They've condensed both charge and intercept into one button called intercept, 15 second recharge, two charges, and when you charge an enemy, you interrupt them, or no, you root them for 1.5 seconds, you get some rage, and if you intercept someone, you're going to be getting yourself a, uh, you know, like a block on that ally and helping them out. Beyond that, the only other thing of real note is uh, the addition of Battle Cry, which is a one minute cooldown. It's just going to give you a 100% increased critical strike chance. So, with all of that being, oh, wait, no, sorry. One other thing, Spell Reflection is an actual magic damage reduction now. It's going to raise your shield reflecting spells cast on you and reducing magical damage you take by 30% up to 5 seconds or until a spell is reflected. Yep, they finally added that into Spell Reflect. Thank God they've needed it forever. It has been it has made no sense that they haven't done that earlier and I'm very, very thankful for it. So beyond that, your rotation boils down to what you've basically been doing the entire time. You just use Rage on Ignore Pain or Shield Block according to the situation. You kind of want to have Ignore Pain up pretty much all the time. Um, it's specifically when you're trying to block a bunch of things when you want to use Shield Block. As you can see, it's only 10 Rage. It's kind of... It, I almost feel like the Rage cost is just there for... I, I don't even know, for ceremony, for ceremony. It doesn't feel like it really costs anything, so it's fantastic there. Uh, but beyond that, the other thing that has changed is your talents. So, what has been you know, switched around and removed. Well, the first thing of note is that Stormbolt is no longer going to do extra damage if it doesn't stun a target. So this is really just about CC. If you're CCing, a, if you need to stun a large group of adds, you go Shockwave. If you need to stun one thing, you go Stormbolt. The other thing to note is the addition of Inspiring Presence, which gives you your raid, you know, 3% leech, but then also Safeguard. They removed Vigilance. Safeguard takes that place. It's going to intercept the friendly target and it's going to take 20% of the damage taken transferred to you. 
this works on your charge. So that means every 15 seconds you have a charge of the old Vigilance without the Taunt addition. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be transferring that damage to you, so you don't want to kill yourself. But it is something nice to keep in mind and know that you have available to you. The only other thing that I want to point out here is something that is very, very important to know, and that is that Never Surrender and Indomitable and the way that they work together. Essentially, if you are undergeared, or if you're fighting something that's doing a lot of damage to you, if you are between 75 to you know 25% of your health often, you want to take Never Surrender because it's going to make your Ignore Pains stack very, very high and do additional absorption to you. But if you find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of gear, you're fighting something easy, you don't have to worry about it, it's doing mediocre damage to you, you go Indomitable and that counteracts the whole point of having Never Surrender. If you use Never Surrender and your health is never going down, you're getting no value from the talent. If your health is always up, you might as well just make it even go even higher and have the Ignore Pain do extra healing to you. Of course, there's always best served, cool, uh, best served cold for AoE, but that's the big variation there that you want to know about, Never Surrender and Indomitable. Beyond that, everything else is just little additions here and there. Nothing really too important to point out. Uh, we already went over the rotation, the talents. Remember, please, glyphs are gone. So anything that was affected by a glyph, glyphs are just minor now, they're just cosmetic. Keep in mind it's different, so don't work under the same assumption the glyphs are still there. You're still using the same you know, thing that you've been using since they were, you know, they added to the game. Glyphs are going to work by being an addition to each of your spells. You can have as many glyphs as you want, but only one glyph can be affecting one spell at a time. And I don't have a list of the glyphs for you guys right now. You can kind of just figure that out when the, when the pre-patch actually drops on the 19th confirmed, but just keep that in mind. The only other real thing to talk about is how some of your gear might change once the pre-patch comes out. So if you go ahead and open here, Hellfire Citadel, we go to Mythic, Loot, Protection, okay. So the first thing to keep in mind is that armor, bonus armor is now gone, okay? And your tier set bonus is going to change. Your two set is reduces the cooldown of your last hand by 50% and your four set is ignore pain's effect is increased by 100% when used during last hand. I think this is actually the same effect that they had before, but with Shield Barrier, now it's going to be affecting Ignore Pain. So there you go. Good cooldowns either way. It's, I mean, good set bonuses either way. Just keep in mind it's going to be changing a little bit different. It's going to be affecting Ignore Pain. And then there's, of course, the mention that bonus armor is gone. So there's going to be a different stat if you've been using, you should be using a bonus armor neck. Uh, most people, they've cleared anything. They have the Archimon neck from one of the different variations of Heroic or Mythic or anything like that. It's going to be Versatility Mastery, not bonus armor. And that applies to cloaks, it applies to necks, it applies to rings, and then trinkets. Anzus is going to be a versatility buff with a static, no, a static versatility with a mastery buff that can proc. You have versatility mastery on the stone sigil. Tyrants is going to be mastery with the stacking stamina. And warlords is still going to be a haste with damage reduction on every hit. And then your class trinket is going to be a shield block, now also reduces magic damage taken by 15%. Ignore pain now also increases your armor by 15%. The one thing I want to point out about here is shield block is 10 rage. You can just use it. It doesn't even feel like it has a cost. So you may get additional value from your class trinket because of that. It's just going to be reducing your magic damage taken. Ignore pain is an absorb shield. It's going to be increasing your armor. I think this class trinket is actually going to be really good. And lastly is your stats. Essentially your stats boil down to a um, prioritization of haste, mastery, and then versatility is equal to or a little bit better than crit is essentially what it comes down to. Please remember that battle cry is every single minute and it just gives you 100% crit, which obviously diminishes the value of additional crit because when you pop it, it's just going to be wasted stats. Keep in mind that a lot of the sim simulation craft people have been saying that Versatility is kind of pointing out to be like the the secret, you know, under the radar king of the tanks. Apparently, it's been reducing a lot of damage, it's increasing a lot of survivability, especially with all the magic damage that happens in Legion. So just keep that in mind. But for the most part, it's haste mastery, and then some versatility greater than or equal to crit. So guys, with all that being said, we've talked about what's changed. We talked about how the mechanic of the class is the same. We talked about the rotation, talents, the glyphs, any gear that you have that might change, as well as the stat prioritization generally for them. 
With that being said, that is the Protection Warrior Legion Pre-Patch Survival Guide. I hope you guys liked the video, and if you did, please drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and I hope that all of you guys have a fantastic day. I appreciate all of you greatly. Thank you very much.